that are affecting me Rising crime, poverty, issues in my own country But today we're talking about it Yes, we're gonna talk about it Ain't nobody wants to open their mouth But we don't speak out at the Youth Zone Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down At the Youth Zone We may be young, but we're the next generation And we're here to save our nation Hey everyone and welcome to the Youth Zone. Last year, we could not help but feel the strong emotions after a young teenager was stabbed to death after school by alleged schoolmates. It was perhaps the most violent captured on smartphone video of what has been a year filled with its sheer violence or graphic ordeals recorded on cell phones that take place in school or involving school students. Has this become the norm these days? Everything and anything that goes down, the first response is a cell phone rather than a teacher or some other authority figure. Why is that when a tragedy happens, the first thing we do is record it rather than get help? How have we become desensitized as a nation of young people? Interesting. In fact, do we actually use our cell phones as a weapon rather than an important communication device? Aren't they banned from schools anyway? And if so, how are people getting them into classrooms and being used to publish some of these most seen acts? Interesting points. On today's show, we talk about crime and violence in our schools. Are cell phones contributing to this issue? Our discussion begins when we come right back. Stay tuned, you're in the Youth Zone. The cell phones have an effect on the crime and the violence. I'm not sure what the effect is, though. You could blame it more on social media. Everybody wants to be seen. Because the cell phone is there, yes, he punched the boy. But even if the cell phone wasn't there, his friend would have been like, boy, go punch him, go punch him. He's still still end up hitting him. I feel like it's a more a problem. I feel yeah, more like you egging on a fight. Like, I want to see a fight, then unless they go fight him, they, they use a punk, they go fight this thing. But the, I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I want to accept that. So we're talking about crime and violence in our, in our schools and whether cell phones contribute to them. How do you feel about this issue and how has it affected you? To find out what you have to say, our social media correspondent, Shanae, has this week's responses. Shanae? Thanks guys, we're always excited to hear from you on our topic of the week. And boy, didn't we get some interesting responses. Take a look. The question posed was how do you feel that violent crimes in Bahamian schools can be decreased or eradicated? Kevinik Stubb says, I believe that some kids do not come from a stabilized home that can change a child's morals and ethics in school. So maybe if violence decreased in homes, the same could happen in the Bahamian schools. Charles A. Carey says, counseling in regular sessions on dealing with psychological issues students are facing and at home, students witnessing violence between parents and being subjected to verbal and physical violence. Tavari Smith said, well, I don't think there are violent crimes in Bahamian schools. I think there are violent crimes among school students. If you consider the size of our student bodies and rate of reported violent incidents, I would guess that the margin is very low. A recent COB study said that the most violent places for our, our students is the route to and from school, not necessarily the school itself. So, we want to hear from you. Stay tuned to our social media sites on Twitter at the Youth Zone 242, Instagram at the Youth Zone 242, and Snapchat the Youth Zone. And don't forget our Facebook page, the Youth Zone. View our question of the week and send us a 20 second video of your opinion. That's our social media report for this week. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Sinead. Well, it's time to turn up the heat. There's still the life of the party and the muse with all the views. We're talking about a TYZ panel. Welcome back another week, guys. How y'all doing? All right, so let's talk about this issue. Very serious issue. I'm very, I get very passionate when I talk about this because I believe so many young people are, are throwing away their lives by being involved in senseless acts that oftentimes are, are perpetrated or encouraged by these cell phones. So what say you about this violence and crime? Do you feel cell phones contribute to it in our schools? 
I feel as though cell phones help to solve the problem of violence. For example, that incident that happened in December with the stabbing of the schoolboy. We, the public, would not have known what went down, who did the stabbing, and what was the aftermath after that if we did not see the video, if we did not see what started off as a simple fight turn in to someone's child being dead on the road. We, it, it, it brought justice. Justice had to be served with that it brings evidence. So cell phones actually help to solve this crime problem. Well, perhaps that's a good point. I didn't think about it that way, actually. But I, I still, I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I want to, if I want to accept that because in schools, I think a lot of times people, people, the, the, the fights escalate because people recording it. So nobody wants to be seen as having been beat down. Mm -hmm. So when you see the cell phones out, you feel you got to fight back because you want nobody to record you getting beat down. So I think it contributes to the issues. And people only go and pick fights so they can record it and say, look what happened, look what I beat this boy down. Uh, I believe that the cell phones have an effect on the crime and the violence. I'm not sure what the effect is though. Because when the people who are fighting, the people who commit these crimes, see these videos, they can either be turned off by it, oh, that saying like, oh, that was very repulsive, or they can be encouraged by it saying, oh, I look so, I look so like violent. I look, I mean, sorry, not violent. I look <laughs> notorious. I want that notoriety. So the cell phones do have an effect, I believe, but I'm not sure in which way. I, I don't, I, I honestly don't think that it has much, and a, much of an effect as like, like it causes me to do like causes them to do violent crimes like I think like as a society as, as children we kind of egg on fights like we want to say fight 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 I think it's that's what eggs on the, that uh, listen that's, that's listen I saw a recording of a school where the, the the boy literally said to the video his friend who had the camera you rolling boy and they say yeah and he went up and punched a dude oh, yeah. and in, he initiated a fight yeah. and, and and it went to me, that's hideous. Yeah. If the phone was not there, he had no reason to try and stage no fight to try and prove his worth or his badness. I just think that these cell phones are a distraction in school. It's, it's definitely, I don't really agree with you mm -hmm. because as Bahamians, we have this mentality as we don't take responsibility for ourselves. So because the cell phone is there, yes, he punched the boy, but even if the cell phone wasn't there, his friend would have been like, boy, go punch him, go punch him, and he's gonna still end up hitting him. I feel like it's a more a problem. I agree, yeah, it's more like you egging on a fight. Like, I wanna see a fight, then uh, let's the, go fight him, baby. Use a punk, baby, go fight this baby. But do you really no, think, do you really think, do you think, I, I feel in my view that since the era of the cell phones, we saw violence soar through the roof in schools because everybody wants to post it or shoot it or, 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 or capture it. I just think it wasn't I mean, as violent without these cell phones. I, my I feel as though it isn't really a cell phone. It could be, you could blame it more on social media. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to make a name for themselves. I could remember an incident where there was a girl, they took a cell phone and they recorded and people was in the camera saying, we could be on BN tonight, we could be on BN tonight. They actually want to be seen and that's what I think the problem occurs not really you can't just blame it on the cell phone and beforehand incidents may have happened but you wouldn't have known about it but since they have these cell phones maybe things that were going on undercover you can see them now they're out yeah, in the open like, now so I that, like that's it would have been a longer like the, in, in terms of that trial that that evidence of the recording who start like we know you kill a baby, yeah. <laughs> okay? So that takes that takes like that that takes money off of it, like the, the investigation, and it just it, it speeds up the process of justice. Yes, it does. All right, so maybe y'all take me down a road that maybe I should perhaps be considering <laughs> um, some kind of which, which way. I'm still I'm, I'm still holding fast because I think that these cell phones have become distracting. Are you are you going to say to me that these cell phones are a distraction in the schools? I mean, I agree yeah. to you. I agree with you a hundred percent because I mean, just like Tremiko was saying how it contributes to solving a crime, it also contributes in promoting it as well. Exactly. I'm just saying, I mean, like, let's, be, let, it, it, there's, there's like a great area right there because yeah. even like what, what Devante was saying, people want to be seen. They just need that ammunition mm -hmm. and recording it is that ammunition because that's notoriety. I want to be seen. I want to be seen beating up someone. I want to be noticed. You know, I, I want to put a question to, to, to you, and that is, do you feel people have become more violent because now with social media, they see more acts being committed, and so they go and try things that they would never try before because of how much likes they could get on social media? One. Two, do you feel people are, are doing things that they would ordinarily not do had a cell phone camera not being in front of them recording? And three, 
what do you feel is really contributing to this violence that we're seeing in this school? Those questions are going to put to you right after our break. Our discussion continues right after this. You're in the youth zone. Having gives the people who know that they're being recorded a sense of motivation, a platform mm -hmm. to be able to. Uh, it gives them an ego. Mm -hmm. Cell phones are not allowed in government schools. So, when we're seeing these videos coming out of the schools, how are these kids getting these cell phones? Are they smuggling them in? Every morning, we ha we check our students thoroughly. I see them shaking their head. <laughs> Every morning. Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down At the youth zone We may be young but we're the next generation Let us save our nation oh, oh. At the youth zone You are now in the youth zone Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're talking about crime and violence in our schools and whether cell phones contribute to it. Of course, to talk with us on this dialogue, he's been working with young people, sharing his gift of music, and we wanted to bring him in to talk about this issue. He's been on our show last week with his new hit, and he's back to talk to us. Please welcome artist Julian Belize. Hey. What's up? So Julian, let's talk about this issue of, of crime and violence in our schools and whether cell phones contribute to it. Do you believe there is a, a, there is a contribution cell phones make to promoting violence? I think having the cell phone gives the people who know that they're being recorded uh, a sense of motivation or mm -hmm. a platform mm -hmm. to be able to, uh, it gives them an ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, just because the, the the cameras on me is you know I gotta I gotta do something because I don't want to look bad on on uh, on TV or wherever this is gonna go, you know. So I think that's the motivation. So to me, if it wasn't there, the chances of you developing that ego, which could lead to uh, something that could cause crime, it, it would be less. What is this phenomenon and this attraction we have with cell phones? Uh, why people believe, you know, that, that you know, every, the minute you something happen, pull on a cell phone and hit record. What is this a phenomenon? I mean, what is yeah, it? Because cell phones are connected to social media directly. With the touch of a button, I could upload something to Facebook and put it on blast. So as soon as somebody sees a fight happening, whatever, they're going to be like, okay, I'm going to broadcast this life live. Like he said, BN, right? Mm -hmm. So people are so hyped about being on this page that the moment they see something dramatic happen, they're like, oh, I'm gonna be on BN tonight. So it's the motivation for the person who's taking that video, and it's motivation for the person who's in that fight. Yeah, and to add to and that, I feel like um, anything with, with, with pictures or videos, we may experience it in the moment, but it's always better to have evidence of it. You know, that's why, the same reason why we take pictures is to re-experience that moment when we look at a picture, look at a video. So these people who are, are having jokes or, or making fun of people, even doing fights, they want to save that moment to then laugh about it later, as crude as it may sound. That, that's a big reason for it as well. Why, why is this issue with crime and violence still so prevalent in our school? We've been talking about this for years. Artists have been going into schools trying to help people steer themselves away from that and focus on education. Why do you think we're still struggling with that? Well, there are several things. First and foremost, the crime factor may be a little different, but when I was in school, um, I, we had the same challenges. We had the same fights. We had the same level of crime. It's just you didn't have a phone to, to broadcast it to the world. That's the first thing. The second thing is I think students aren't as motivated to learn um, as we were. Or, and thirdly, I don't think that the teachers are as motivated to teach. Mm. Uh, fourthly, I don't think that the parents are doing as a good of a job as they can do to raise their children. And that's because kids are having kids. And I think fifth, it goes back to the level of encouragement, the level of motivation. You being able to say to your kid, I believe in you and make them want to go and work hard to to do well in school and you see what I'm saying I think that's how that has a lot to do with it but I got to big up my ass but first and cruise and I was here because the kids are on the side of it so, you know I mean? a matter of fact a matter of fact I'm, I'm gonna allow you to I'm, I'm gonna allow our comments but I want to if, if one if one of our panelists can get the mic down to the, pr is the principal here from SD 
I, I want to ask, uh, uh, let's give the mic to her, and, and can, perhaps you can help us understand, if, what, is the, what is the Ministry of Education's policy regarding cell phones and kids with cell phones? Are they allowed to have cell phones in schools? Right now, uh, Mr. Watts, cell phones are not allowed in government schools because I, um, I tend to agree with what Julian said. Um, some, of the, some of the reasons why we're having it, one, children, the lack of motivation in children, the lack of support in parents, and then two, our children are not go, going to church the way we used to go when right. we were growing up. So all of that contributes to the problem we're seeing now. However, um, cell phones are not allowed in government schools. So when we're seeing these videos coming out of the schools, how are these kids getting these cell phones? Are they smuggling them in? Got, uh, is there a, a checkpoint when they enter the gate to see where they have cell phones? How are they getting these cell phones in? Let me speak for Essie McPherson. Mm -hmm. Every morning, every morning, every morning, we, ha we check our students thoroughly. I see them shaking their head. <laughs> every morning. Now, if a parent need a child to have a cell phone, they can bring it to the office in the morning, we will record it and put it, uh, secure it for them, and they can get it back in the afternoon at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. If they are found with a cell phone on them, we secure it, and then it's returned to an adult wow. at a specified period of time. <laughs> now, um, you've been teaching, obviously, for many years, or been in the school system for many years. Over the last 10 years, what has, the, what has the difference between the children then, as far as their attitudes were concerned, versus now? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Ten years ago, what were the students like compared to how they are now? Is there much difference? Ten years ago, we had no social media. True. <laughs> Ten years ago, those who had phones, cell phones, were of the rich and the elite. Mm -hmm. It wasn't common to everyone. Ten years ago, we used to read the hardback books. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, we had chores mm -hmm. after school. Do you understand me? This time, now, none of that exists. So do we blame social media for the way that the community, the community is no. actually? Do we, do we put the blame on social media as, a, as it relates to the crime? And, or what? What can I you will say not from your say perspective? That. I will not agree with social, say social media is the problem, no. All right? I would say the way we use it yeah. may be the problem. Mm -hmm. But it is not the problem because it has its advantages and its disadvantages. But we, as intelligent students of S.E. Mafoson, we tend to look at the positive side and try to use it in the best way possible. Remember, these children are being trained and we're here to train them to use these things properly. I think you made a good point, and I think that that issue is it, it, you can't blame social media for a job that a parent should do. Yeah. I think we, we live in a society where there's such a break, a breakdown of, of family structure in our society that children go, they, no matter what you give them in school and what you arm them with, by the time they go home, all of that is broken down because of the homes and environments they come from. The morals aren't there. The mother got three cell phones. She got the latest cell phone. She could hardly pay the rent, but she got, she got an S6. She right. got an iPhone 6, and, and, and she want, and she, don't want to, she have an next phone, and she on the phone, and she telling you what, what on Facebook and says, I think we've seen a breakdown in society that's causing these kids, even when they react to the, the, the issues, they're not being taught conflict resolution. So no matter how much you teach it in the schools, they go home and it's not reinforced and we have a problem. Yeah, I feel like uh, the biggest solution possible to crime is not necessarily moving social media or, or these external sources, but focusing on the individual itself. And how are we changing these students and these individuals of our country to change their paradigm, the way they think, and, and steer from something that's more you know, cynical or, or aggressive and more about positive, uplifting themselves and reaching success in, in positive ways. Because I think the reality is, when we look at the issues of why we see school violence, most of it is over stupidness. If you hear why they was fighting, my God, at least tell me you was fighting because you were fighting against, uh, for, for peace or for justice, for your community, yeah. or, or for, for oppression. <laughs> But don't tell me you fighting because he demanded me. You talk to me bad, boy. Oh man, he was trying to. He was, he was wiping my gal, boy. Yeah. What is that? 
Oh, what is that? You know, yeah. or because or because he walk on my foot, means and bay, you can disrespect me like that, bay. Yeah, you walk on my on foot, bay, buddy, I around you, bay. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's silly reasons yeah. that we get, that we have not taught our people how to resolve oh, simple conflict, and, and because they become so frustrated that they cannot solve simple conflicts, mm -hmm. they only react to violence because that's the only way they can express their anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But Mr. Watson, going off what you said, I totally agree with you. I think it all starts at home. Like, if a child sees its parents arguing in front of them, that's the first thing they know. I see my parents arguing. Mm -hmm. So most of the violence comes from home. That's what I think. I think it's a gift down a curse because I have a lot of friends who didn't grow up in a, 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 f a happy home. Mm -hmm. And they use that as motivation rather than, mm -hmm. you know, not. So... I, it, it still boils down to the mindset of the individual and the company that they keep. That's mm -hmm. the source of it. Now, if you don't know any better, once you get in trouble once, twice, you should be able to, start to, to decipher, hey, this makes sense or it doesn't. So it still boils down to the individual and the yeah. spirituality and what, what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't keep, I don't like to, I don't mean to bring up the word believe, but it's just a word that we use every day. And really and truly, it represents hope and it represents faith. And it's a spiritual word. And we have to hold on to that. And I guarantee you, if we teach one another how to believe in ourselves and how to encourage and empower our brothers and sisters, we would be in a different state in this country. Because Bahamians, the reality is we pull one another down. We don't mm -hmm. uplift. Too you much. see what I'm saying? Too much. Um, and to be able to perform all the way in China was a blessing for my country. You know, but why did it have to take for me to go there first? And not to say it like that. It's the reality. You know, sometimes you got to work hard. You know what I mean? But why wasn't the same Caribbean side videos being shared before I went to China? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think, we're, I think we're the, you said it correctly, and I'm gonna wrap up on this, and, and that is our society is so quick to, to support negativity mm -hmm. than positivity. Mm -hmm. I mean, Social we're quick media, to yeah. post, uh, um, on, uh, I mean, grown adult uh, sites mm -hmm. and, 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 and blogs are quick to, to, to celebrate when there's violence, but we're slow to, to, to encourage young people to, do, to make a difference. And, and, and it's not just, social media, I think it's in any aspect we go into. I mean, you look at it, we hear every corporation, every corporate so Bahamas talking about how it's important to change our society and crime, but you go to them, write them one letter to, to support a program that you're doing to, to uplift young people, and all of a sudden anybody tell you, oh, we ain't got it right now, or things tighten the economy, but yet we still want to see a productive young people. Well, how is it going to happen if you're not willing to invest your money? Will you be willing to have them steal it from you? You know? And I, and preach, I think, preach, yeah, preach. No, yes. Reality, reality. We, we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we live a double standard life. And I think until the adults change the way we live in our country, our children won't change. Because we keep saying we want change, we want a better society. But we're not willing to back it with our money. We're not willing to back it with our time. But we keep talking just to be heard. But we ain't doing nothing to create change. Yeah. And we have to create change. Okay. That's the bottom line. We have to create change. Well, definitely we're not out of talk, but we're out of time. So let's continue the discussion on social media at our Facebook page, The Youth Zone, and Twitter page, we're at The Youth Zone 242. Or meet us on our interactive chat live at thenestbahamas.com because we want to hear from you. Well, don't go anywhere. Your TYZ News is next after this break. Stay tuned. The Youth Zone. We may be young, but we're the next generation. And we're here to save our nation. Oh, oh. At The Youth Zone. You are now in the youth zone. Hi everybody, I'm Alexia Johnson. And I'm Jose Etienne, and we're back, bringing you not only important, but also relevant youth news. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie confirming in Parliament recently that government has rearranged the national budget to ensure the Ministry of National Security has all the resources needed to win the war on crime. Additionally, he said government is exploring avenues to help more at-risk youth. For the first time ever, the College of the Bahamas hosted Campus Fest 2016. It was a fun-filled religious event that brought young people from all over New Providence to have a great time with God and interact with each other. Bahamian artists such as Averia Roll and Band, Najee Dunn, Gospel Boys, and many others were featured. Apostle Raymond Wells was the guest speaker for the event. Amazing. Well, an outstanding young lady is making headlines because of her unique talent, and it has become a delicious treat. We get more from our TYZ reporter, Shanae Smith. 
25-year-old Bahamian freelance writer, Carissa Rowe, was recently featured on the immensely popular website known as BuzzFeed. The reason she was featured was to showcase her intricate creations known as miniatures. Rowe sculpts miniature replicas of food from clay. She creates foods such as slices of cheesecake, plates of sauce, coconut tarts, and many more types all around the same size as a Bahamian five-cent coin. BuzzFeed dedicated an entire article in which they interviewed her in order to highlight her works of art. When asked how she felt about being featured on the popular website, Rose said she was freaking out and that she was extremely nervous but excited at the same time. The feature has gotten her lots of new attention and brought positive exposure, not only to herself but the Bahamas at large. Rose says that the feature has brought on a new chapter in her life. I'm Shanae Smith for TYZ News. We want to hear from you if you have news regarding our phenomenal youth. Well, that, my friends, is the news for this week. I'm Alexi Johnson. And I'm Jose Etienne. Please don't touch that remote. Stay, Stay tuned for my youth zone after, after the break. break. We're back with another exciting season of learning to speak Mandarin and our language coach Tanya McFall has some new and innovative lessons for us. Hey, welcome Tanya. Thank you for having me today. So to us, you mean how? Right. So we talked about to, we, today we talked about supporting each other and we know that's something very important. And in the cases of an emergency, we should have a support team that we whenever we need them, we can reach them. Now, let's see how much you've remembered. Mm -hmm. mm. We've talked about the family before. How many members in which members in the family have do you remember? Baba. Baba. Baba, Baba was what? Baba. Father, good. Mei Mei. Mei Mei, Mei Mei. Mei Mei was a sister, right? I heard something else. Wei Wei. Yeah, yeah, grandfather, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Mother. Tai Tai, okay, Mommy. is your wife? Yes, Devonta, uh, remembered wife, uh huh. What mama. about Mama? I heard Mama, uh huh, with your mother, right? So let's talk about some other persons who have uh, who have played important roles in our lives. Friend. Pongyo, 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 right? Ponyo. Good. All right. What about your teacher? Oh, oh, good. Lauscher. Very good. Lauscher. I'm not getting any of these. I heard the sensei, sensei just now. Yeah, that's, a, that's a different vibe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's talk about some other people. For example, our pastor. Many times, some of us get in trouble. We have to call the pastor, right? Mm -hmm. So, Mushur. Let me hear you. Mushur. Good. Sometimes we have to call, we have to dial 919. We have to call the police. police. The po -po. <laughs> All right. So everybody's ready. Jing cha. Jing cha. Jing cha. Jing cha. All right. So how did we say mother again? Mama. 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 Good. Mama. How did we say father? Baba. 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 Come on. Baba. 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 Good. How did, we, how did we say police? Jing cha. Good. Jing cha. Jing cha. All right, and we talked about friend. How do we say friend? Pongyo. Pongyo. Remember, what a pongyo means, my friend. So what a pongyo. Right? Pongyo would be friend. And we talked about teacher. How do we say teacher? Lao shi. Good. Are there anyone, is there anyone else that you can think about? What about your doctor? Our doctor would say yi shang. Yi shang. Yi shang. Yi shang. Good. Your nurse. How many of you want to be nurses in the, in the audience? No, nobody yeah. wants to be a yeah. nurse. <laughs> All right, we'll learn it anyway, because of course we need we need our nurses. Who sure? Let me hear you. Who sure? Good. So we talked about the doctor. We talked about our nurse. We talked about our police, and our policeman was what? Jing Cha. Jing Cha. Jing Cha. And we talked about our pastor. How do we say pastor? Mu sure. Mu sure. Good. And Mushur. that's our lesson for today. Sai Chen. Well, it's about that time for our focus on encouraging entrepreneurship. And of course, it's called Stripes of My Own Business. And this season, we focus on Bahamas Striping Company. Take a look. Then it's obviously basically finding out where things are going. We mark things out. We basically design a layout on the ground before we put anything down. We use chalk and string method, uh, we use a rope, 
and we use tape measures and measuring wheels. Once everything's marked out, we then basically heat up the plastic. Like I say, this job isn't just about painting lines, it's about maintaining the equipment. It's about making sure the plastic's the right temperature. It's making sure that we have the right conditions. My vision for the company is to help teams throw the board bombers doing work on an area island to throw the bombers. So when I bring someone in, I bring someone in with, with the idea that they will, they will be able one day to lead a team. Understand? So I, I, I push them, I encourage them to every day try and learn something new. Uh, don't just, don't just uh, uh, sit back and wait for me to tell you to do something. Take initiative and go ahead and do, and, and, and do what you know what is supposed to be done. A lot of what we do will determine certain accidents, who's to blame, and a lot of law comes into what we do. So we have to make sure that what we put down is to the right standard and to the right specification. It's not just about painting lines. So Mr. Mitchell may have started off painting lines on New Providence roads, but his goal has always been to expand. So far, so planned, so done. Uh, my company is, is, is in, the, in the process of, of branching out into curbing, uh, sidewalk making, or wheel stuff making, uh, at least manufacturing. We're going to be getting into a part old uh, Pretty much a, a full-fledged full uh, road, road maintenance company. Uh, we actually have looking at, at actually branching off into road, road cleaning, manual cleaning, and, and, and highway sweeping as well. Uh, but the goal, like, like I said earlier, is to actually have branches of Bahamas striping. Uh, in June of this year, we're actually looking, looking forward to having our first branch open in, in, in my hometown, Abaco, uh, which whereby I, I love to hire about 10 persons. Uh, we, we just re recently purchased uh, two new striping equipment, which is the updated version to the, to the paint machine. And we actually have a, a new thermoplastic remover. Uh, which is called a scrabbler. We are actually uh, in, the in, the, in the process of, of bringing in some new equipment that uh, help us with the manufacturing of the real stuff and, uh, and the sidewalk as well. Not only are these young men fully engaged, they are what many Bahamian men have ceased to be, encouraged and empowered. Just like I say, this company, I look into being this company, tell, tell like they, they even give you the option this, where they say us. And if, if you see a couple of years and you don't feel like you could do something yourself, you go and start your own, your own thing. So that, that, that go to that show you, they encourage you to get it on your own. You don't just have to work for the rest of your life for somebody. You could start your own thing too, so you could be your own entrepreneur in life. It's going down at the youth zone. We may be young, but we're the next generation. And we're here to save our nation. school what sets you apart from the rest well every week we'll find out when we feature a different school and this week we're featuring SC McPherson Junior High School please welcome the vice principal Anna Hasty hey. so welcome to the youth zone what's happening at SC McPherson SC McPherson Junior High School is the school of choice it is a school that believes in only the best is good enough Therefore, we are training our students to learn. Learn not only academics, but learn how to conduct their social lives, learn how to conduct themselves in society when they're out of the walls of S.C. McPherson. Now, I, I, when you think of junior high schools, I know even before, even before they were junior high school, one of the popular ones always comes out S.C. McPherson. So obviously you're standing out in many areas. Tell us about some of the standout areas that, you, that you're known for why your popularity continues till today. S.C. McPherson is known for academic excellence. Our BJC results of 2015 reflects that we are on top. Wow. We had nine students who attained all A's. Wow. We had 78 students who got seven or eight BJCs, wow. A to C passes. Wow. Wow. So what's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. What's, what's the difference? I mean, is it a teaching method? Is it the teachers? Is it the environment? What's causing your school to stand out so much from the rest? We are a holistic school. We motivate our teachers and our whole staff. 
So everyone has the same vision. We buy into the same vision and we all work toward the same goal. We involve our parents and our community and all of us drive the force that moves the children forward. That's awesome. Who do you have sitting next to you? I have my awesome teacher of the year all right. and reading specialist. Teacher of the year, tell us, what did, what did you do? I mean, there are a lot of outstanding teachers in this country. So to become teacher of the year for your school, what did you do to, to obtain that, that, that prestigious title? Thank you very much. I did what my passion is. I teach and I teach, my whole life is teaching. It's not only in ESMA first and I do it every single day. And I basically, I drive my students because I show them that I'm interested in what they are doing and I show them genuine love. So they, they confide in me and they, they believe that they can do it because I show them that they can do it. So I just go beyond the call of duty when I'm, when I'm doing my work. One of the concerns we always hear is teachers don't care like the way they used to. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. I really do. Some teachers, they don't, they don't care. But you have a lot of teachers who do care for, for the students and who have their best interests at heart, and I'm one of those teachers. Wow. Yes. How, how is it for you having to take a child who comes into your school, troubled, challenged, and turn them into something that society would want to run after? That takes a lot of work and dedication beyond the, the, the 9 to 3 o'clock hours. Yes, it does. Like I said, I think the whole, this, the remedy is love. I think that the world is lacking genuine love. And the Bible says that love is the fulfillment of the law. And if you, if you show those troubled students love because they are lacking that in their home, I am sure you will turn around. They will turn their life around. And it's not only the troubled students. I mean, every student is, has different capabilities. Yes. Some may not be as intelligent as it seems as the others, right? But being a teacher, it's really important, you know, to go ahead and make sure that every student is able to achieve their absolute best. And it's great that you're able to do that. Do you still have the classroom size issues? How are you able to overcome that? We are able to overcome the classroom size issues in terms of allowing our teachers to group the students. Mm. And so when a large group of students come out, we would divide them into smaller groups. Yeah. And even within the classroom, we allow the teachers to operate into groups so that the students can work at their potential, so that there may be students who need more attention than others. Yeah. And so that is the way we would operate. I want to hear from some of these students in the back there. What do you like oh, about your school? Come on, let me, uh, and what do you think makes your school stand out? I think one of the things- Here's your name, first of all. John A. Roca. Okay, John A. Go ahead. Okay, one of the things that makes my school stand out is because my school is very interactive. We like to compete in things and we like to stand out. What are some of the things you compete, your, your school competes in and wins? Speech competitions. All right, okay. all right. All right, let's hear from you. Give us your name. Hello, I'm Keontae Stewart, and I am also the head girl. Oh, Our achievements have been wonderful. <laughs> Last year in November, I actually won first place in the King Door National Parkinson Foundation. Oh. We also placed second in the Junior Junkening Parade. All right. <laughs> we have upcoming speed competitions, and we are now coming in the spelling competition, and we also have various inter-host competitions because we have host spirit day in between the host team, as you can see, we're wearing our shirts. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. And we try to bring host spirit to the students because we are a school of competition, and because the fact that our teachers really want to help us, they believe that competition will boost our spirits and help us to move forward. That's outstanding. Let's hear from these gentlemen. Guys, they say the guys are lost. You, you agree with guys are lost? Um, no, sir. Well, first of all, I want to say my name is Duran Thompson. I'm head boy of the great SC Mac first. All right. <laughs> well, I believe that the generation today is getting lost, but due to some of the teachers and the great support from our parents, and today I would like to say that with, without their support today, I don't think I would have been head boy. Wow. Because my family went through some tough stuff, but due to some of the teachers, I think it has really motivated me. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's hear from you, young chap. Give us your name. My name is Tavon Neely, and I am the deputy head boy of Essie McPherson. Um, today, awesome. our male students are lacking more motivation to move them forward. Here at SC McPherson, they try to focus more on our male students to push them forward in extracurricular activities, such as BJC classes, clubs, and even at lunchtime, we have our own little basketball games that our P, P teacher tries to 
discipline them and show them spiritship and compete against one another. See, this is what we need to be tweeting out and posting on Facebook. Yeah. This here is what we ought to be promoting because we are so quick to violence. When you sit back here, I'm just taken back by seeing these young junior high school students talk sometimes better than senior high students. Yeah. And it, that, that motivates me to see that our public school system is not lost. Yeah. Our public school system are putting out some of the best young people this country has to offer. Madam Principal, you ought to be very pleased with your students in your school. These are some outstanding students, outstanding students. And I'm happy that we're able to hear about not just what the teachers and the principals say about the school and the vice principal, but really hear the students themselves and how motivated they are about their school. And if they feel that way about their school, then they must be doing something right. What y'all say? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So of course, we definitely want to salute Essie McPherson for the outstanding job that you are doing and for being our School of the Week. Let's hear it for Essie McPherson. <laughs> I give you the final thought, your final thought about the great S.C. McPherson. I really wish to say that S.C. McPherson motivates all students. We have introduced something called the JOTS Award. It's an acronym, Jewels of the Sea. Mm. And we reward students who make incremental progress. Each student who has made progress will be awarded. Seventh graders get the Coral Awards. We have the eighth graders, the Aquamarine Awards, and grade nine, they get the Pearl Awards. So all students who have made incremental progress academically are recognized by their peers. And as was said earlier, this motivates them and affirms them, and it also allows other students to want to get the same. That's awesome. Yeah. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, S.C. Matt Ferrison. Well, listen, we're going to have a great time right after the break. Our artist, who was our guest just now, Julian Believe, he's going to set S.C. Matt Ferrison and the user on fire with this new hit right after the break. Stay close. It's been great hanging with you. Hit us up on Twitter at UZone242, Facebook The Youth Zone. Or you can email us at theyouthzone242 at zeninesbahamas.com. Of course, we enjoy having you for the show. Before we go, I want to say thank you to Halle, who filled in for Sophie. Sophie will be back next week. And of course, closing our show out is a phenomenal young man who has been with us in our last show, Julian Believe. Julian is here. Before you even perform, Julian, we must say congratulations for making the Bahamas proud at the Miss World Contest in China. That must have been an awesome experience for you, wasn't it? It was an amazing experience for me, and I'm very, very happy to be back home right now, still performing for my Bahamian people and getting ready to take our music back to the world. So, as promised, you got to go out there and continue to support. Make sure you go on all my social media pages, type in J-U-L-I-E-N, believe, and follow this journey. And let's take the Bahamas to the world. All right, there you go. Julian is getting ready to go on stage to perform. We want to thank all of you for being a part of this show. And, of course, we look forward to you being a part of the Youth Zone next week. We leave you now with the sounds of the man himself taking Bahamian music to the world, Julian Believe. Goodbye. I need everybody to put your hands up right now. Hey, put them up, 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 put them up. Back that bumper on me now. Time stop the party, make me proud. I tell you, shake it up and only cause it's yours. Hey, where you learn to wind your ways. You shift all right, you make my day. Your sexiness deserves an applause. I know why you came to this place. Your breathing so celebrate. You might as well demonstrate. If you're screaming out, suck my say. Hear them say, Mabule. Dance them cares away. Everybody say.
Gal went to the baseline. Oh, that's my jam. Party hey. ambassador. Zaga. Hey. We don't care. Hey. Everybody know I love the joke and I love the jam and I love the drink and sing. Every time I around the world around town, as we always celebrating. They say we the life of the party, what we do is so amazing. We love to slow wine, go wine. From that to party, we misbehave like we have no control. Every time, any place, any day, we on party patrol. We represent this time right now. All the party ambassadors, let me hear you say, say. We don't care. We put our hands in the air. Tonight. Put them up, put them up, put them up. Hey, we don't want the Hey, 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 hey. Everybody say, we don't care. We put our hands in the air. Tonight. Party ambassadors touch the whole place. Turn up, crowd in the frenzy. Everybody on up, pop the champagne. Go, crunch, go, 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 Put him up, put him up. 